Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, so today I'm doing something a little bit different from normal. Um, so usually I just talk about one game in particular. Um, but today, I'd actually like to talk about a series as, as a whole which I've just finished. So over the, a little bit over the past year, I've been playing through all of the Kingdom Hearts games. And just recently finished uh, the last one, uh, Melody of Memory. So... Uh, I've done everything that's in the all-in-one package, so you have Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix, um, Re Chain of Memories Final Mix, uh, the cutscene collection of 358 by 2 days, um, Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, Birth by Sleep Final Mix, uh, the cutscene collection for Recoded, um, Dream Drop Distance HD, Birth by Sleep 0.2, uh, Back Cover X, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, plus the Remind DLC, and Melody of Memory. So, I, I've gone through all of those, and I kind of would like to just kind of say that this is a really great series that I didn't really expect I'd like as much when I first started it. But, overall, I think I could recommend it to literally anyone that's either either interested in Disney, or just any kind of RPG at all, or even just anyone that just likes games in general. Because Kingdom Hearts is just is really easy to get into, and it's just really good overall. But I thought for this video in particular, I'd sort of just go over like a series thing as like which ones I think have the best, uh, which which are the best in certain categories. So, for instance, these are the six categories I kind of have plotted out. So first is going to be best soundtrack second would be the best story third best gameplay fourth best villain in the series which won't be just a game that'd just be just the top three villains um the best end game um of the game so like the like, like the best like final scene of a game uh and then my top three as of right now so, but before any of that, I just kind of want to give my general thoughts on each game in particular. So, for Kingdom Hearts 1, I talked about it a little bit uh, in my top 5 games from 2022 uh, video, but that was, at the time, my favorite. And I, I do think that it's a really great introduction to the series, even if um, a lot of concepts later on would be changed. Uh, probably for the better, but... I still think it's a very great, strong start. The next would be Rechain of Memories, which I knew in general people don't really like that much, but when I played it, I honestly thought it was really fun, even if the reused assets could be a bit annoying, uh, since you just have to go through basically every single Disney World all over again from Kingdom Hearts 1. But I think like just the gameplay, how it like changed everything up, and the story itself was enough to keep me in all the way, and I, I still really enjoyed it. Uh, but I do, I would agree that, uh, the game does have l little replay value, since you really are just going through the same Disney World as Kingdom Hearts 1. Um, next off, um, I did play Kingdom Hearts 2 before 358, because I, I know how that works. Uh, because I played them all in terms of, like, release date order. Um, so for Kingdom Hearts 2... This is the one where generally everyone says it's their favorite and it's the peak of the series. But when I played it, that really wasn't um, my impression of it much at all. I thought the game was pretty much mostly 80% Disney filler. But, every, but I know that sounds not that great, but like that other 20% is really, really good and st really strong. The beginning in Twilight Town, even though the, that gets annoying on subsequent playthroughs. Uh, the middle ground with Hollow Bastion and the fight against the Thousand Heartless is amazing. And then, of course, ending the game with the world that never was is also just incredible. Um, so next up, yeah, we have the 358 by 2 days um, cutscene collection, which I, actually I, I really liked it. Um, you know, I didn't get to play the game since that didn't come with the collection, but honestly, 
I think that if any, if any game needed the um, remake, uh, like how you have uh, re-chain of memories and recoded, I think we could use a, a three by, three five eight by two uh, remake like that. Like that, is that would be awesome. And then next up, Birth by Sleep. Um, I think it's really really good. Like honestly, the only thing I that I think it has going against it is um the fact that pretty much you're you're playing the same game three times with slight uh, story changes. Um, but of course, Terra, Ventus, and Aqua all play very differently, so you're going to get a different gameplay experience each time, but, like, just, like, the fact that, like, you're going to the same world just three times for three different playthroughs, um, that, that wasn't the best, but I still think, like, focusing on the gameplay was really good. Uh, and then there's Recoded. Um, and I am going to side with the more uh, popular opinion on this, that Recoded is um, definitely the worst in the series. Uh, and that's just coming from the cutscene collection alone. It just this, I, It was almost painful. But, I mean, I guess it does explain a little bit of things for um, Kingdom Hearts 3, but like other than that, it doesn't really serve a whole lot of purpose. Um, and then you have Dream Drop Distance. Um... So yeah, I I have I guess I do have a lot of Kingdom Hearts hot takes, um, because Dream Drop Distance is one that I actually really really liked, um, in a similar way to Birth by Sleep. I think the only thing that really has going against it is, obviously, this is where the story in Kingdom Hearts starts getting really really convoluted, and messy, and in terms of gameplay itself, the only thing I didn't really like that much was the Dream Eaters because they were kind of annoying. I, I felt like it would been better if you just got to keep Donald and Goofy, and then I don't know what they would have been with Riku's part, but I think overall, just adding flow motion is probably the best thing. Uh, it, I think it adds a lot to the combat, but uh, next up, Birth by Sleep 0 0.2. Um, I don't want to call... I, I know it's a game, but I don't want to consider it really a full game, because it's really just... A tech demo for Kingdom Hearts 3 because it's only two hours long and it explains something that happens during Kingdom Hearts 1 that'll become relevant in Kingdom Hearts 3 so I mean like it the two hours you have of playtime are quality but you're playing as Aqua who is already my least favorite character in terms of gameplay from Birth by Sleep so I mean it's all right but I mean it it's definitely not gonna be in that top three list I'm gonna give later then you have Back Cover X. Um, I mean, it. I like the cutscene collection because it gives you a lot of stuff from the Union Cross games, but um, it really just feels like it got rushed into the 2.8 collection just so it could explain things that were going to happen in Kingdom Hearts 3 for the people that didn't play the online web browser game. Um... But yeah, I mean, like, it's alright overall, though. So, I mean... Alright, next up. Kingdom Hearts 3. Um... I really like Kingdom Hearts 3, even though I know some people don't, but... Like... There were a few things that were, um... Not... Like, the only things I really th think I can say bad, that were bad about it, were just a couple plot things. Like, uh... Riku's Keyblade breaking, and then he just able to get a new one, and that does, isn't explained at all. Oh no! Keyblade. It's broken. Um, there's like a concept where they're trying to find like the new seven hearts, like the seven hearts from Kingdom Hearts One, who've been become new people except for Kairi. Uh, and then they find, like, three, which is Anna, Elsa, and Rapunzel. Uh, and then they just drop that concept entirely and never talk about it again. And then, in the same manner as Dream Drop Distance, there's lots of time travel stuff that really convolutes the plot uh, too much. Um, and then there's Remind, which I, I thought Remind was good for the most part. When you get to 
limit cut, it does start getting very, very challenging. Like a very, very steep uh, difficulty curve. But I mean, overall what you're getting is quality. Even if you do have to repeat a lot of the end game from Kingdom Hearts 3 all over again for uh, the first part of Remind. And then there's Melody of Memory. So I played this like just a few days after completing Kingdom Hearts 3. So I would imagine that if someone hadn't played Kingdom Hearts 3, it, like, like if they played it when it came out and they waited a couple of years to get this, it would probably be like a nice nostalgia thing for like the entire series. But since I've just been um, grinding the entire series over the past year, I mean, it was fun as a rhythm game, but I feel like there's a, a lot of Disney tracks that I just really don't care about. And if it just focused more on like the core, like the Kingdom Hearts series music and not just like the disney worlds it would have been a lot better and a lot less drawn out and tedious but the uh, the exclusive stuff that you get at the very end is pretty good though and it, i'm guessing that's gonna um play a lot into kingdom hearts 4 whenever that comes out uh which i am excited for by the way i i thought the trailer looked pretty good um but yeah now i guess i can go over those like top three for each group so for best soundtrack uh going i'm gonna go up from third to first uh for each of them so number three for best soundtrack i'm gonna give that to 358 by two days um even though i i technically just watched a cutscene collection i did listen to a lot of the soundtracks online and there's a lot of really really good stuff in there in particular um obviously vector to the heavens is kind of one of Yoko Shimomura's, like, magnum opus pieces for the entire series, besides, like, Dearly Beloved. So, like, just for that, it it needed to be in the top three, but I also thought that other songs like Fight in a Way were also really good. So next up for number two for best soundtrack in the series, Kingdom Hearts 2. So you get a lot of really iconic stuff that would come up later in the series, like Tension Rising... get the more recognizable version of 13th struggle that wasn't the game boy version until they did retain of memories but still this is where you get the more iconic version from kingdom Hearts 2 
Twilight Town, World That Never Was, um, <clears throat> Sinister Struggle. It's just so much good stuff from the soundtrack that you all get from Kingdom Hearts 2. Surprisingly, uh, I'm the best soundtrack of all Kingdom Hearts. I'm giving to Kingdom Hearts One, um, because I, I mean, it's it's really hard not to. I mean, this is what started the series. There's just so much there: Destiny Islands, Hollow Bastion, um, End of the World. There's just dearly beloved Destati. Like this is what started the series. Every single like iconic returning uh song it all started with kingdom hearts one so but yeah moving on from there going from best story third to first so for number three um i think the third best for story is birth by sleep so it, it tells a really good story between you know the three friends we have um terror's descent into darkness by the end uh, Ventus, who's just trying to bring Terra back. Aqua, who f feels like she might have betrayed Terra for just following him without trusting him. Uh, and then you have Ventus's own self-conflict with Vanitas, who's like a second part of himself. You get a lot of just really, really iconic scenes just from this one. And yeah, so that's why I think it's number three. So for number one, I mean not number one, number two, the best story in the series, I think goes to Kingdom Hearts 1. So for this, I think just the best way I can describe it is Kingdom Hearts 1 is sort of just like, it's the series at its simplest, but it does not necessarily in a bad way. It's a story where Riku and Sora, Sora, who at first seems to be the more childish of the two, has to learn to grow up while 
Riku gives into darkness and becomes more childish in the end. And the this story, like this kind of like the growing up story that you see in Ocarina of Time, is, you see this also in Kingdom Hearts 1. And the ending to Kingdom Hearts 1 as well, where Sora has to say goodbye to Kairi not knowing what's coming next is also really good, while also saying goodbye to Riku behind the door to darkness. Uh, but I'm not going to linger on this too long just because of it, but um, the best in the series is 358 by 2 days. Even though I only watched the cutscene collection, it is such a good story. I don't know what else I can say about it. It's So you have Axel, Roxas, and Shion, and Shion doesn't know who she is, and Axel does, but tries to hide it from both Roxas and Shion, because he knows if anyone knows the truth, it's just going to drive them apart, but they find out anyway, and Axel just wants to keep his friends together, because that's really all he has. And then you have, you know, this scene at the end where both Roxas and Shion are part of Sora, and since Shion is a part of um, Sora's memories, she has to return to Sora, which Naminé and Riku uh, both want. And you have the scene where Roxas essentially has to kill Shion, which is super sad uh, ice cream scene. And then Roxas leaving the organization only to be defeated by Riku and taken to the data world for the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 2. It's the, um, it, it's the best. I, I mean, I don't know what else I can say. It's just the best. Um, so next up, just gameplay. So we're going to have... Alright, so number three for gameplay is um, Birth by Sleep. So I think for Birth by Sleep in particular, I'm, I'm also just going to say like what I liked and didn't like so this is the first game where you start getting like your drive gauge where you can like hold r1 to like scan enemies and then shoot um you know like whatever it is that that specific character does um so, and that would come back in kingdom hearts 3 which i liked but this is also the first time where we start getting the uh abilities through an individual cooldown instead of using an mp bar which i think is for the best because it makes it a lot more balanced because in Kingdom Hearts 2, what you what I would usually find myself doing is using some ability until it was almost out and then using Cure. Because it didn't matter how much it cost, it was just going to use it all up anyway. And then just rinse and repeat. But I think when you have individual cooldowns, it becomes a lot more balanced and as a result also a lot more fun. Um, the only thing I don't really like is I think D-Links... Um, aren't as useful as they could be. I only find myself using it a couple times just for healing for characters that didn't have that quite yet. Um, but I mean, overall, it's still really great. So next up in terms of gameplay is Dream Drop Distance. So I kind of mentioned this earlier, but I think the only thing that Dream Drop Distance has in terms of gameplay going against it is the Dream Eaters, which I don't like because they kind of feel more like an annoyance. Um... But yeah, like, you get flow motion now, which is really fun for always. It, it's, it's fun to explore the worlds. So you can just, like, hop off of walls, jump up, do an extra uh, air dash. It's just, it, it feels very flow motion. Like, like the motion and just the flow of it all is incredible. And that did get nerfed in Kingdom Hearts 3. But, I mean, overall, Dream Drop Distance is really good. So they do the thing again where you have individual cooldown abilities, which I, I think is for the best because it makes the game a lot more balanced. Um, and you get to switch between Riku, who plays completely differently, who's a lot more aggressive, whereas Sora's a bit more balanced between using his special abilities and his physical attacks with his Keyblade. Um, Riku seems to be, or he is just like a lot more based on physical attacks using his Keyblade uh, with minimal minimal extra abilities uh, but moving on for the best in the series in terms of gameplay it's Kingdom Hearts 3 I think for Kingdom Hearts 3 in particular you really get the best of everything even though you do get the return of the uh, MP gauge which I don't really like that much but other than that everything is perfect you have um, 
limits, which I think are actually a lot more useful in this game than they were in other ones. You have the return of the shot lock mechanic where, you know, you have your drive gauge and you fill it up and you can shoot everything. And it's different for every Keyblade now, so that makes it even more fun. And now you get key Keyblade form changes, which are also really good, while also being able to switch Keyblades in the middle of combat. Um, and although flow motion is nerfed, it's, it's still there and it's useful at times, and I, I do like it. Um... I don't know what else I can say. Just Kingdom Hearts 3 got it right. Alright, so now just going over the best villains in the series from 3rd uh, to 1st. So number 3, I'm giving that to Xehanort. Even though he's kind of the big mastermind beho behind the entire series, you don't really see a lot of his like reasoning until Kingdom Hearts 3. After he's seen, like, let's see, one... After you've seen like four different iterations of him uh, by that point, you've already seen um, Xemnas and some young Xehanort and uh, Terranort. But you don't really get to know him as a character that much until parts toward the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. So I think as a villain overall, he's good, but he's, he's not better than the first two. Um, and so for number two, my second favorite villain in the series is Vanitas. Even though he only appears in Birth by Sleep and Kingdom Hearts 3, there's just something about him that I find very compelling. It's probably because I just have a general attraction towards characters which are like darkness or dark versions of characters. So for instance, um, you have like Dark Samus who I think is a great antagonist for the Metroid Prime trilogy. Uh, dark Pit is obviously, I think, a really great villain for Kid Icarus Uprising and so on but i think this vanitas being like a dark sora since vanitas was once a part of ventus's heart and then once he left sora filled in that gap so vanitas takes the appearance of who replaced him who was sora and how that plays out within everything how he is darkness he can't be redeemed at the end of kingdom hearts 3 because he, in the end, he isn't really a person of his own. He is pure darkness uh, because of something from Union Cross or something. Um, but yeah, I think overall, but like, he has these funny lines too, like the. Um, All right, what did you mean about Terra being a different person? Exactly what I said, idiot. There's something that's so childish about him, even though he's supposed to be the embodiment of darkness. That I just kind of find funny. Um, but next, yeah, the best villain in the series is Xemnas. I think most people probably saw that a mile away, but it, it doesn't matter. It, it's Xemnas. is his original, like, since Kingdom Hearts 2, when you think that his goal is, you know, as a nobody, is just to become a normal person with a heart... I thought that in itself was really compelling to just be completed as a person. And then you find out in 358 that he had some other goal instead. Just to find out in 3 that... Or not in 3, but in... I guess in 3, but also a little bit in Dream Drop Distance that the true... Organ, that the true um, goal of Xemnas was to make the true Organization 13 full of the heart vessels of Xehanort to forge the keyblade and then he has this really killer line at the end of kingdom hearts 3 when you defeat him do you see a heart is just pain pain is being human xemnas really it must take incredible strength Like, that alone was, like, a really, really good scene. Like, it, Kingdom Hearts 3's Endgame had a lot of really good scenes, but that's one of them at the top. But, yeah, on that note, best Endgames in the series. Uh, so, at number three, Birth by Sleep. Uh, I got a lot of Birth by Sleep at number three, but anyway. Um, just so, for 
for what I'm considering to be uh, the end game for Kingdom Hearts 3 is Keyblade, Graveyard, and Onward. So you just, you mainly just got a lot of really, really good fights. Like you have, um, let's just go, I'm just going to go in order from Terra, Ventus, and Aqua. So starting with Terra, you have the battle against Xehanort and Vanitas. And then once he gets defeated by Xehanort and has his body taken, you have the um, fight with Lingering Will and Terranort. And I know that everyone who played against, fight against uh, Lingering Will from that secret boss battle of Kingdom Hearts 2 was just like really blown away by that. It was, it's such a great finale for his story. And then you have Ventus, who has to fight um, Vanitas, and then another fight against Vanitas within his own heart uh, to f for the forging of the Keyblade. And then Aqua's story, where you have to fight Zigbar, uh, who, be who become more important to the plot in Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind. But it, like it's knowing that he what came up he was from all that way back just to play what could be a more significant role than even Xehanort. So then you fight him, and then you have to fight Vanitas, who has taken over Ventus's body with the Keyblade. Uh, and then after that, since both... Um, yeah, so you have Ventus is put to sleep and locked away in Castle Oblivion. Um, Terra's body has been taken over by... Uh, Xehanort, so you have the final battle with Aqua versus Terranort which, in Radiant Garden, which is just really, really cool. Um, but yeah, I don't want to dawdle on that too long, so I'm just going to move on to what I think is the second best endgame in the series, which is Dream Drop Distance. Even though, you know, his plot could be really shaky at times, I think the... Like, once you get to the world that never was... At that point on, it's just everything from there is really, is this is quality. Like, that's when the story starts, goes from, like, not that great to just, like, really great, like, out of nowhere. Where you have, um, starting with Sora, you have him, he sees, like, everyone who's connected to him, including Roxas and who he doesn't know is Shion. He can feel everyone's pain that's connected to his own heart. And that leads to him fighting... Uh, Xemnas again what? and then he gets put to sleep within his own dream so you have Riku who's fighting for him back but has to fight Ansem once again and once he's defeated Ansem and woken up from his dream Sora's still sleeping so he has to go within Sora's own heart but his own heart is protected by a dark um, suit Ventus and then after you defeat Ventus, who's residing in Sora's heart. You have to fight young Xehanort in, um... The organization's, um... I don't know what you call it, but it's that... It's the, it's just a great final battle against the young Xehanort. Um... And so, yeah. After... After Dream Drop Distance, for the best endgame in the series, it's... It's Kingdom Hearts 3. It... It's got to be Kingdom Hearts 3. Just like Keyblade Graveyard on. You know, they have the fight against the Thousand Heartless again. You have the part where everyone is destroyed by the Heartless Hurricane. And then he has to go back in time to save everyone by using the dead Keyblades from everyone in Union Cross. Oh, that scene is so good. And then you have this, like arena where you have to fight a ton like every single organization 13 member so you have to fight everyone uh, from the new from the new organization 13 and then you have this like a bunch of really good cutscenes. um for instance like there's a lot here but the scene where you have shion trying to fight against sora and then he just like he knows who she is even though no one else remembers her and he's able to like kind of bring her to her senses by saying her own name and help her to remember who she is and then that next scene Roxas returns and then 
right after that in the same cutscene um Kyrie's taken away by Xemnas which leads into another thing in the end game and then you have the scene with Sora, Aqua and Ventus fighting Terra Nort where like the the ghost thing that's been with Ansem usually although he's also with Terra Nort is actually the heart of Terra all this time and he's able to retake control with Sora's help uh, after Terra Nort nearly kills Aqua and Ventus and then you have the scene um, where you have to fight uh, Ansem, Xemnas, and young Xehanort on like the roof of the... It, it's kind of like a Colosseum, so that's what I'm going to call it. Even though it's not the Colosseum from like the Olympus world. Um, so you have to fight them, and you have, you know, the, I already mentioned the really good cutscene with Ansem. They need to feed him. You have the cutscene where... Um, Riku says that he's going to miss Ansem when he's gone because even though he doesn't like him, it was because of him that he's grown as a person over time. And then, you know, young Xehanort, I mean, we don't really like him that much. But then you have the scene where um, Xehanort basically kills Kairi, forges the Keyblade. Sora is able to take him and Xehanort uh, to Scala Ad Kylum, defeat him there with the Keyblade, and Xehanort, who is still possessing Terra's body, dies. <laughs> so Terra's new body is just a um, with the perfect replica. Uh, so yeah, that that was something I thought was a bit, you know, sad that Terra's real body was. Um, Xehanort, so he, his real body essentially died. Um, and then you have all the stuff from Rimon, but I'm not really gonna go over all that. But I mean, it's, it's good, especially the thing with Yazora at the end is good. And it leads into Kingdom Hearts 4, presumably. So yeah, now the big three, the top three overall. Number three, Kingdom Hearts 3. So, I think just overall, Kingdom Hearts 3 has a really good balance of, like, good story, but also good gameplay, because I think it has the best gameplay in the series. Even though a story wasn't in my top three, I still think it's, like, it's really up there. I mean, I'd probably put Kingdom Hearts 2 at number four, and then I'd probably give the Kingdom Hearts 3 after that, but because, you know, they do have the stuff where they start dropping a lot of plot points, like the Seven Hearts and then Riku's Keyblade breaking, which is stupid. And then, um, you yeah, know, the time travel stuff from Dreamed Up Distance. But I mean, overall, it's a, it's a good mixture of both. You get the, the best gameplay in the series with a, one of the better stories in the series. So that's why it's number three. Uh, for number two, it's Birth by Sleep. Birth by Sleep is just, it's good. You get the, what I think is, um, the third best story and the third best gameplay in the same one. But I think just something about like the characters overall really resonated with me a lot more since you're not just seeing, oh, it's uh, another Sora, Riku, and Kairi uh, trio. It's, it's actually just like a new bunch of people who are deeply related to the story. Um, and it just almost has this like crisis core ending you know, like the sad prequel ending, you know, like Halo Reach, Crisis Core, etc. Um, but, you know, Aqua falling to the Realm of Darkness, saving Terra, or Terra Nort, who forgets who he is, becoming Xehanort again, even though Mickey wouldn't realize him, which doesn't make any sense. Why would they mention that in Kingdom Hearts 2? Anyway, um, it's, just, it's number two. It's, it's, it's good. It's really good. Uh, and then number one, it's Kingdom Hearts 1. I mean, you get the best soundtrack in the entire series, the second best story in the entire series. Even though the gameplay is a lot more like a traditional uh, JRPG, I mean, it's, it's more like a, yeah, it's more action-y and less like Devil May Cry-ish where you're just comboing people into oblivion like you would be in later games, but... It holds up, even though it's not the best. Um, 
it just overall is just it's where everything started it's so iconic the music the music itself is so good it's it's kingdom hearts one it's really really good that's all i got but yeah thanks for watching this this is probably one of my more longer ones but i think just overall kingdom hearts as a series has blown me away when my friend told me yeah you should try kingdom hearts i really like it so um i was not expecting to like it nearly as much as i am and i do really like it um but yeah that's all uh, let me know what you think in the comments if you have any opinions uh see you in the next video bye